will be helping me manage this webinar. For your information, this webinar will be recorded and it will be posted on our website. In the case that you can't find it on our website immediately after this presentation, we do tend to update our YouTube pages a lot more frequently so that you can find the videos to all of our previous uh, webinars uh, on our YouTube page. We also do plan on sharing the slides and the links regarding all of the information that we're gonna share in tonight's uh, presentation with you in an email. The email will be sent to all of the people who registered for this uh, specific Zoom webinar. So it may take about a day or two for us to follow up with this information, depending on how long it takes us to prepare all of that, uh, all of those resources, all of the videos and all, all of the links that we're gonna be sharing in, in tonight's presentation. Our agenda for tonight will be composed of three main parts. First, as a usual standard for all of our presentations, we'd like to give a, a brief overview of Central Coast Community Energy. Um, this is gonna take roughly three to five minutes to explain what our role is, how do we work with PG&E or, or Edison, depending on, on uh, where the customer is being served. Next, we will focus on utility bill assistance resources, um, as you may have seen in previous uh, energy updates that we've given to the customers, we like to also provide updates to the folks that would like to learn more about the latest uh, resources that are coming from the state, as well as the federal government, um, as well as your local utilities or nonprofits that are all uh, in the space of providing utility bill uh, assistance to folks that need, need the help. Uh, next, we'll be providing a brief update on energy programs for both residential and small commercial customers. And this shouldn't take any longer than five to 10 minutes. We'll just be updating you on what programs um, are still available, um, if there's still funding available for the programs that we'll talk about. And then we'll continue on to the main topic of this presentation. We will introduce the customer energy portal. We'll provide a brief uh, overview. And then at the end, we'll, we'll give a live walkthrough of how you can find the tool on our website, how you can sign up and register, and finally, um, which features you can use on the portal itself. So in, in terms of housekeeping, there are a couple of items that we wanna share. If you do wanna interact with staff, ask us questions, you're more, uh, you're more, welcome, more than welcome to do so. There are a couple of ways that you can ask us questions. We do ask that you include all of your questions in the Q&A box. That does help us track the questions a lot more easily as opposed to adding the questions to um, the chat box. So again, use the Q&A tool. It's where we can track your questions very easily. You can also uh, use the raise hand feature and that notifies staff that you would like to uh, be unmuted at the end of the presentation and ask your question out loud. We welcome either way for asking questions and we do look forward to, to having a productive conversation um, at the end of the presentation. So just to clarify, this, this webinar will be uh, helpful for customers that are uh, specifically PG&E residential customers because the portal right now is uh, designed to only um, serve them. But in the future, we are enhancing the, the portal and upgrading it so that it could also accommodate customers who are commercial customers, ag customers, as well as uh, folks who are in the uh, Edison service territory. This program or this webinar will also be helpful for the general Central Coast Community Energy customer who would just like to receive updates on the resources that are coming from uh, folks who, who are in the space of providing financial assistance resources. Or if you'd like to also receive updates on energy programs, we will be using the first portion of this presentation for those updates. We did uh, intentionally uh, schedule those updates to come in the, the first portions of the presentation so that if you uh, find that the portal isn't so relevant to you or you can't really um, access the portal because right now it's only available to pg e residential customers, you can hear the updates first and then you can um, make your exit if you, if you feel like the portal isn't necessarily helpful for you right now. So just to provide a brief overview of who we are, um, we do work with PG&E or Edison to provide your shared service. Um, we're in the business of handling the generation component, which means that we source the energy on behalf of all of our residents and commercial customers. 
PG&E or Edison still deliver that energy through their poles and wires, and they send one single bill that contains uh, both the charges that come from Central Coast Community Energy as well as PG&E or Edison. We do replace the old generation charges that came from either PG&E or Edison. And our charge is basically uh, nothing additional. So, you know, that's really important to, to, I think, clarify to new customers or folks who are still not familiar with us. Uh, when you see our charge appear on the first page of the bill, it's very easy or, or reasonable or natural to assume that we are an additional charge. Uh, but we are, in fact, um, just replacing an old charge that came from your uh, utility. And currently, our rates are set up at about a 2% discount off of the utility rates, such that you are paying lower every month on your energy bill just by being a shared customer of Central Coast Community Energy and your local um, utility. In addition to that, as a shared customer, you also benefit from a larger suite of energy programs. So if you already participate in a discount or rebate program through your local utility, you can also benefit from the incentive programs that we offer you um, as well. So our, our service area spans the entire Central Coast from Santa Cruz County down to Santa Barbara County. We do serve a total of 33 jurisdictions, 29 of which are cities, four of which are counties. And the few exceptions to that rule would be that uh, the unincorporated communities of San Luis Obispo County, uh, the city of Lompoc, uh, King City, uh, the city of Santa Barbara uh, do not actually uh, receive our service. And that also includes the city of Atascadero, which I almost forgot to mention. As a customer, you are defaulted into our 3C choice service offering, which is effectively where you get to benefit from those competitive rates that I had mentioned. In this offering, you are paying for an energy mix that is comprised of 31% of eligible renewable energy. And our goal is that by 2030, 3C choice will be supporting 100% renewable energy that comes from a variety of sources. But for the folks that do not want to wait right uh, all the way until 2030 to receive that amount of renewable energy. We do have a premium offering that is available to all of our customers at this moment, and that is 3C Prime. This comes at a premium cost. You would be paying 0.8 cents per kilowatt hour more than the 3C choice rate. But here, you, as you can see, you are paying for a service offering that contains uh, solar and wind, and it does uh, support 100% renewable energy right now. There is no penalty or, or fee for opting or choosing or switching between the two uh, service offerings that you see here. It's a completely optional offering and it's, it's available to anyone at this moment. So moving on to the first portion of this presentation, we wanna talk about the updates on utility bill assistance. And when I say utility bill assistance, I'm specifically referring to uh, electricity bills. We know that there are a lot of folks worried about how they're gonna make those payments on time for their energy bills. We have a lot of folks that are worried about uh, getting disconnected. And so what we try to do in our monthly webinars is just provide updates, real-time updates on some of these uh, resources that are coming from various entities. As an agency, we don't actually administer any of our own utility bill assistance programs, but we do find that it's an important, uh, we do have an important role to play um, supporting these other entities that do administer these programs. It's really in the best interest of, of everyone to make sure that this information gets out to the folks that need this information. Additionally, it is important to point out that if you participate in any discount program or if you're interested in participating in any um, assistance program, your participation in those programs does not affect your participation in Central Coast Community Energy or any of our energy programs. On the contrary, if you qualify or participate in any of the discount programs offered by some of these other entities that we will talk about, you may actually qualify for an additional incentive for some of our energy programs that we share for our residential customers. So to start, we do have a web page known as the Customer Financial Resources page. We can provide the link in the chat and also in the email that we follow up with after this presentation. 
And basically, this web page summarizes all of the information that I'm going to share in this presentation. It summarizes all of the available financial resources to help you pay your energy bill. And that, that also comprises resources not only for residents, but also for commercial and ag uh, customers as well. And we do have this page available in Spanish. As I said, the information that we are going to share in this presentation can also be found in this web page. So if you feel like something was left unclear, or if you'd like to follow up on some of the resources that we're sharing tonight, feel free to check out this web page for more information. So transitioning into uh, the first of, of the many programs that I will be sharing tonight. First up, we have the California Alternative Rates for Energy Program, otherwise known as CARE. And this one offers a monthly discount of up to 20%, uh, actually 20% or more on your gas or electricity uh, charges. You can qualify for care based on income, but you could also qualify based on participation in certain public assistance programs. So if you already have a previous participation or a current participation in an assistance program from another public entity, that may um, streamline the process for you to qualify for this program as well. If you check out the link on pg &E's website, we can offer the, again, you can look at all of these links by accessing our customer financial resources webpage. You can learn more about how you can qualify, whether it's based on income or on this, uh, you know, previous part participation in public assistance uh, programs. Next up, we also have the Family Electric Rate Assistance Program, otherwise known as FARA, which offers a monthly discount of up to 18% on your electricity bills. Again, uh, this program, it does require you to qualify based on income, and you can learn more about those income eligibility uh, requirements on pg e or Edison's website. They both offer these programs. Um, in this particular program, you would have to have a household that has three or more people. So that is the one distinction between, uh, one clear distinction between the FARA and CARE program. Um, just as a reminder, there is no need to reapply for these benefits. You don't lose access to any of these benefits if you are also a customer of Central Coast Community Energy. Next up, we have the uh, LIHEAP program, which is administered by the federal government. And it is, the funds are actually uh, managed by, uh, are divvied up and, and distributed to various nonprofits in the service area. We actually have three nonprofits that manage this program. We have the Central Coast Energy Services Organization that is based up in our Santa Cruz and Monterey Bay uh, region. We also have the Community Action Partnership of San Luis Obispo that focuses more on the San Luis Obispo County region. And finally, we have the, we have Calm Unify, uh, previously known as the Community Action Agency of Santa Barbara County. And these three organizations, again, administer what is known as the Low Income Energy Assistance Programs, which effectively can provide a variety of different, um, uh, uh, different forms of assistance to customers with needs. Um, first and foremost, they can provide you direct uh, and one-time financial assistance to help you balance um, your utility bill. They do also offer the Energy Crisis Intervention Program, otherwise known as um, ECIP, which uh, specifically assists customers that are potentially receiving a 24 to 48 hour disconnection notice or service termination. Uh, it might also be re relevant for households that have or are facing energy-related uh, crises deemed potentially life-threatening, such as uh, having a combustible appliance. They also offer the weatherization program, which offers uh, free energy efficiency upgrades to low-income households that help you lower your monthly utility bills while also improving uh, the health and safety of the household's occupants. And finally, they do offer education and basic on basic energy efficiency practices, as well as energy budget counseling, should you need that as well. So in response to the pandemic, the average management plan was created to help people get a handle on their bills. Anyone who participates in this program will receive forgiveness for 1 12th of their starting past due balance for every on-time payment of their current monthly bill with a maximum uh, possible amount of $8,000 in total forgiveness 
per a 12 month period. As you can see, there are a couple of eligibility requirements that does require you to be a CARE or FARA customer, which is why we first and foremost always promote those programs so that you can be eligible for uh, additional uh, resources such as the arrearage management plan. You also must make all 12 uh, months of on-time payments to remain in the program. So if you fall out of compliance at any point, um, just be reassured that you don't lose any of the benefits that you've already received. Any, any amounts previously forgiven are not forfeited, for example. Also, if you fall out of compliance, you do have to wait for uh, roughly 12 months to be able to re-enroll or reapply into the program. So just, just a note for anybody who's considering the program. If you'd like to learn more about this program, again, you can find all of these links on our customer financial resources page, or you can just directly contact PG&E or Southern California Edison for more information. The alternative to the arrearage management plan uh, would be the default payment plan that was uh, instituted by the state of California for all utility customers who have residential energy debt of 60 days or more. This plan was designed to help customers manage their energy debt over a two year period to help a lot of our customers uh, avoid disconnections, especially those who were experiencing economic um, challenges during the pandemic era. This plan has already started for customers uh, since September of last year, I wanna say. So if you are a customer who meets these conditions, uh, but have not made arrangements to participate in another payment plan, you are likely already participating on a 24 month payment plan where all of your past uh, due balances are distributed over a 24 month period. It's likely that PG&E or Edison has already reached out to you to inform you that you are put onto this default payment plan. But if you do qualify for, for another plan, such as the arrearage management plan, which does offer forgiveness, um, you may wanna reach out to your local utility to see if there's a better payment plan for you. Again, this is the default payment plan to help customers distribute their debt over a 24 month period. And it's really designed with the goal of helping you avoid disconnections. But if you think there's a better plan that's out there for you, such as a, a forgiveness plan, I highly encourage you to reach out to your utility to learn more. Finally, there is a new pot of funds that uh, otherwise known as the California Rearage Payment Program or, or CAP in short. And CAP is a new financial assistance program customers with past due balances of 60 days or more. As a customer, if you met these conditions, you did not need to apply for the funding unlike the other programs that we've um, just finished sharing. It was actually PG&E and Edison who applied for funds on behalf of all of the customers that qualified. And that includes customers in Central Coast Community Energy um, in our service area. So starting in February of this year, and for some customers in March, you will see a bill credit appear on your energy bill. It'll basically appear as a subtraction of your current charges. So again, if you, if you were a customer who met these conditions, it's because you had a past due balance of 60 days or more, and you accrued uh, some of this debt during the, the period of March 4th of 2020 to uh, June 15th of 2021. Most of this funding is targeted at active residential customers with past due balances who are at risk of disconnection and non-payment. And any remaining funds are applied to other active residential customers with past due balances, but perhaps they're not at danger or at risk of, of disconnection. And also for any inactive residential accounts as well. So now we're gonna switch gears to talk about the energy programs that we currently offer. Um, we're gonna keep this portion brief, given that I think a lot of these programs uh, are ongoing and many of you may already be familiar with the programs that we offer. But in any case, I wanna just treat this portion as an opportunity to provide updates on our current uh, programs. So we do have a portfolio for the energy programs that we have launched or expect to launch in this fiscal year, which runs from October of 2021 to September of 2022. And so what you see on the list here are the programs that we expect to launch um, in, in the coming months. And that may include residential electrification, for example, or the battery energy storage pilot program, which is still in development. 
Currently, we do um, still offer Electrify Your Ride. And there, I'm happy to report that we still have plenty of funds left in that program for all of our customer segments. We do still have the school bus electrification program. The ag electrification program is still an ongoing program as well. And then finally, we do have the new construction electrification program, as well as the uh, innovation grant that is available to all of our uh, community-based organizations and businesses and, and school districts. So for Electrify Your Ride, here's a breakdown of the incentives that are offered under this proposed or this current program. And that includes uh, incentives for battery electric vehicles. These are vehicles that are fully electric or plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, which we refer to as uh, plug, excuse me, as PHEVs. And the plug-in hybrids right now are only available to our customers that qualify based on income. For all other customers, you can only qualify for battery electric vehicles if we're specifically talking about EVs. In this program, you can also qualify for electric bikes, um, electric chargers that you can install in your home or in your business. And you could also apply for what is known as an EV charger, uh, EV readiness uh, measure, which provides you funding for the installation of the charger, for any electrical upgrades that you need to make to your home or business in order to accommodate um, the load that is necessary to, to have the charger installed. So that may include replacing or, or upgrading your service panel. Um, that may include installing an outlet or any wiring changes that need to be made to your home or business, again, to accommodate the charger for your electric vehicle. We have a separate pot of funds for each incentive, so you can apply for more than one incentive um, if you choose. Again, if you qualify based on income, you can get additional amounts for each of these measures. That includes the electric bikes, the installations, the, the upgrades, as well as the electric vehicles. So if you'd like to learn more, we still have the program uh, available on our website, and that's where you would also have to fill out an application um, to solicit some funds. The Ag Electrification Program is another ongoing program with plenty of funds left. It's designed to help our Ag customers, um, our businesses that support Ag. That may include our growers, our producers, as well as any businesses that are in the, in the, in the business or um, that are closely involved with supporting our, our growers, for example. Um, this, really, this incentive program is designed to serve as a rebate. You would have to pay for uh, the item first and then apply for the program to get your funds. And the design of the program itself is to help our customers obtain all electric ag equipment. And so this could include items such as a forklift, a tractor, um, an electric pump for your farm, excuse me, for your farm operation. And we do provide additional incentives for our small to medium businesses. This is done in order to provide uh, additional support to folks that may uh, need that added push to, to go all electric. And we understand that we have a lot of small growers, a lot of small uh, to medium businesses here in the service area that would appreciate that, that level of support. Again, this program is still available. There are funds remaining in this program, and you can fill out an application by going on our website. So finally, we're, we are gonna be uh, talking about the main topic of, of tonight's presentation. And so for the remainder of this presentation, we will be covering how the energy portal works. We will walk you through how to sign up and show you which features you can use once you've already logged into the portal. Just as a summary, the portal is, a, is an online tool that customers can use to view information that is related to their energy accounts with Central Coast Community Energy. We hope that you feel encouraged to check out the portal. And if you require any assistance uh, setting up an account or understanding how the portal works, please feel free to get in contact with our energy advisors who have been doing a lot of behind the scenes work on making sure that this portal and provides the best experience to all of our customers. If you'd like to offer suggestions to enhance the portal, you are more than welcome to do so as well. We do have a survey that's available. It's an ongoing survey. Um, we could provide the link to that survey in the chat, but it will also be available in some of the resources that we will share in the email, as well as um, the website itself. You can find it on the webpage where this portal um, is, is uh, found. 
So again, we, we appreciate any feedback that you can offer to help us enhance the portal. And we, we hope that you uh, find the rest of this, uh, the remainder of this presentation informational as you uh, begin to get set up with a portal account. So before I start with the walkthrough, I do wanna share a couple of slides before we proceed. Um, really this slide here just shows you that we do have it available on our website already. It is live. You can find it under the residential services tab, which I will be showing during the, the live walkthrough. This, uh, we consider this version really to be our first iteration of the portal, but we do expect to make continued enhancements to the portal as we receive feedback and continue to work on it behind the scenes. So here's a quick summary of how it works. The portal is designed to give you access to your PG&E bills. Uh, it does allow you to have greater visibility of your monthly charges that come from Central Coast Community Energy. And it also provides you tools to help you monitor your usage over time. When you're on that usage tab, you can adjust the, the, the time at which you're looking at your usage at specific intervals. So if you wanna look at your usage over the course of a day, you can do that. If you wanna look at your usage over the course of a, of a week or a, a month, you're also able to do that using the tools that we've provided. We're also providing you with a self-service tool under one of the tabs to help you opt your accounts individually to our 3C Prime offering. Again, this is our 100% renewable energy offering. It's completely optional. And in the past, there has been a couple of ways for you to opt out or excuse me, opt up to 3C Prime, mainly by getting in contact with a representative but now through the portal, you can opt all of your accounts. You can do it at an individual um, service location level, or you can do it all at once by using this tool. And finally, we do have a tab that will allow you to see which programs uh, you would be eligible for as a residential customer. And as this portal continues to, to be enhanced, we do expect to add a, a few more integrated features in the programs tab that will potentially allow you to track your program status, for example, and perhaps also directly apply into some of these programs using the portal. There will be more updates to come on that, so we look forward to, to sharing those updates as, as the portal continues to develop over time. So when you sign up for account, it is important for you to have a copy of your PG&E bill handy. Some of you, for some of you that does consist of uh, logging on to your PG&E um, website account to find uh, the latest copy of your PG&E bill. For those of you that already have paper bills, you can, you can grab one and, and begin with the process of registering your account. So first and foremost, you will need the first 10 digits of your PG&E account number. You will need um, the exact name that appears on your bill and you will need the exact zip code that appears on your bill. And so during the walkthrough, I will be showing you how you can use the help buttons to help you identify uh, that, that information as you're registering your account. So as we're launching this portal, we do have a couple of resources that we wanna stand up on our website. We have a YouTube page where we upload all of our recorded webinars and you can reference these uh, this page whenever we, we complete our webinars. We tend to update this YouTube page um, a bit more quickly than we do on our website. You can also uh, look forward to a video walkthrough of how to register your account, which will be available soon. Of course, you can reference this webinar as, as a resource for that, but we will be focusing on, on creating a, a separate video that focuses on registering your account. We also have uh, the call center. We, we refer to these folks as the energy advisors. You can give them a call or you can email them at northsupport at 3ce.org. The North Support address is specifically for all of our folks that are served by, uh, by PG&E. For the customers that are served by Edison, that email would actually be South Support. But for the purposes of the portal, since it's only available to our PG&E residential customers right now, um, Really, it's North support that is able to provide you with, with the resources and the help that you need to get an account set up, for example, or to collect your feedback should you have any concerns or suggestions to enhance the portal. If you'd like to provide your written feedback, we do have a place for you to do that. We, we have a survey 
that we've created. It's an ongoing survey. It's available not only on the web page or the portal, but it's also going to be available in the email that we'll share with you after this presentation. So if you have any suggestions on how to enhance the portal, you're more than welcome to, to provide your feedback. We do also offer you the option to uh, write your contact information and PG&E account number should you want a, uh, an energy advisor to get in touch with you to uh, resolve any issues that you may have experienced or to um, solicit any feedback that you may have uh, directly. So now for our final portion, I will be conducting a live walkthrough of the portal. So if you can bear with me, I'm gonna go ahead and get set up uh, quickly so we can get started with the walkthrough. So before I start, Gabe, can you just confirm that you can see the shared screen? Oh, we can, Ozzy. Okay, perfect. So I think it's a good point to start at the homepage of Central Coast Community Energy. For those of you that need help finding the, our webpage, you can just type Central Coast Community Energy in your search terms, and we will be the first website that appears uh, in the results. So once you've made it to the home page, I want you to focus on the, the tabs that you see here in the upper half of the screen. You're going to hover your mouse over account and services and click on residential services. And the residential services tab really is a, is a page for you to uh, understand what services are currently available to you as a, as a residential customer. So as you scroll down, you can see some of those resources that we currently offer, whether it's uh, the ability to opt up to 3C Prime on our website or understanding your bill, receiving more information on that through our educational video. And as you scroll down, you will find a link that offers more specific resources to PG&E customers. And so I want you to click on the green box here. And here you will, you will find where the customer portal is currently uh, living. So you can see that we've just added this to our web page. We provide an overview of the portal itself. Um, you do have the links that you need to access the portal as well as a survey, which you can find right here where I have my mouse pointing. And finally, if you'd like to access the portal, you would click on the orange box right here. So um, if anybody would like me to go a little slower, I, I can try to do so. I'm, I'm trying to keep the pace of this walkthrough um, at a good and slow pace, just in case you um, have any issues seeing any of the information that I'm sharing. So once you're on the login page, you can see a couple of features. On the right side, you can see that we've integrated our pop-up so that you can have access to any uh, updates uh, on the latest resources that are coming from Central Coast Community Energy. If you are a new user, you will want to register an account for the first time. So you would click on this link right here. And there's a couple of things that I do wanna share on this page because we have encountered a couple of customers that have um, experienced some issues with uh, registering an account. So what I hope to do in this page is just um, clarify things that uh, should be added to these fields to ensure a successful registration. If you feel that you haven't entered all of the information correctly and the errors are completely out of your control, you're more than welcome to reach out to our, our call center for additional assistance to get set up with an account. So like I said, it'd be really handy if you had a copy of your PG&E bill, whether it's digital, or um, in paper format, because you'll need the first three fields uh, to be referenced from, uh, from your PG&E bill. You'll need those three items, uh, three pieces of identifiable information from your PG&E bill to complete the registration process. Starting with the utility account name, here you'll want to enter the, the exact spelling that appears on your PG&E energy bill. And so if you have a middle initial, for example, you'll want to add that as well. So for example, if I was, if I had my energy bill and it said um, Oswaldo Martinez, for example, I'd want to make sure that it had the exact spelling. 
I'd also want to avoid any loose spaces that come after the name. So it's very natural sometimes for me to add a space after my name. I accidentally press the space bar um, after I've entered my name. You'll want to remove any, any loose or additional space that comes after the name to avoid any errors that may be misinterpreted by the system. Secondly, you'll want to add the first 10 digits of your pg e account number. Um, right here, we, we reference what it may look like on your bill. We want you to only add the first 10 numbers that come before the hyphen. So be very careful here. We don't have a limit on the, num the amount of characters or numbers that you can add to this field. So it's very important that you only add the first 10 digits of your account number. And finally, you'll want to add the exact zip code that appears on your pg e um, energy bill. So if you'd like to see a sample or, or a better view of where you can find this information, we do have two links that take you to a, a sample of a bill. So if you look at this pop-up here, you, you click on the help button and it shows you uh, this bill sample right here that highlights those three key pieces of information that you need. So for starters, again, you'll need the exact spelling of your name that appears on your bill. You need the zip code that's tied to your address and the account number. Again, we're looking for the first 10 digits of your account number. Once you've added all of that information and you've ensured that you've added it correctly, you've ensured that there's no spaces, no loose spaces before or after um, the inputs that you've added into the fields, you're ready to proceed on to the next step. In these last three fields, you have the liberty of adding unique information that isn't necessarily identical with the information that you have with your pg e account. What I mean by that is if you want to add a unique name, so instead of adding Oswaldo Martinez, I could perhaps add Chris, um, we'll just use Gabe's last name, Chris Ruiz as your specific um, profile name you're more than welcome to do so. There's no limits on that. If you'd like to add a unique email, an email that isn't necessarily the same email that you use with pg e you can also do that. Just keep in mind that the email that you use will be the one that you need to uh, reference to find your uh, the email, the welcome email to activate your account. And it's also going to be the email that uh, effectively becomes your username whenever you need to log into the portal. So once you've added all of that information and upon successful registration, you can you, you should check your inbox or your spam or junk folders to look for that welcome email that's going to uh, give you the opportunity to activate your account. In that welcome email, as, as you click on that link to activate your account, you will also be prompted to create a new password that you'll use to log in um, to the portal. So bear with me, bear with me for just a couple seconds. I'm going to go ahead and log into the portal itself. I think we can go ahead and proceed with exploring the portal. So when you first log into the portal, you'll see that you are redirected to the home page. And here you have an overview of what the portal is designed to, to be used for. We do have a pan, uh, excuse me, a banner here that promotes all of our latest energy programs. And in the future, as we develop more programs for our customers, this is actually going to start to rotate. It's going to show various different banners um, that rotate um, over time. At the bottom portion of your screen, you can see all of your service locations. So it's designed to show all of your active as well as inactive um, service locations. It's also designed to show you your current rate code. So for this particular customer, they are on a time of use rate plan, which is designated by the symbols that you see here. We're gonna move on to the billing tab. As you can imagine, this tab is designed to show you your, um, a complete history of your billing records. The great, I would say the great, the great benefit of having this tab is that it gives you uh, additional visibility of your 
charges that come from Central Coast Community Energy. So as you look through your billing records, you can see your monthly charges specifically that came from Central Coast Community Energy. And you can see your usage that's associated with each bill that you received. So as you scroll down, you can see all of your charges, all of your usage per billing cycle since you became a customer of Central Coast Community Energy. So of course that date will vary depending on when you enrolled with our agency. For this particular account, the enrollment occurred in January of 2020. You also have the ability to download your invoices. So you can get a digital copy of your invoice. So if you were to press on any of these buttons, it, it provides you the invoice for that billing cycle. So if I were to click on this, it redirects me to, or it refreshes the page and prompts a download of that bill. So I can now reference it as a PDF in my downloads. As you can see, you also have the ability to manipulate the amount of information or, or filter the amount of information that you would like to see. For most customers, they will be, uh, the default on this page will allow you to see as much information as possible, but you can filter that depending on, on the amount of information that you would like to see. You could also reference these help buttons right here, which provide you uh, additional information about the terms that we talk about. Some of these terms can be confusing. So if you, if, you have, if, if you find yourself having questions about some of these terms, I encourage you to check out the help button that will help you understand how we uh, look at the pg e account number or how we reference the ESP um, customer number as well. Again, if you need any assistance while you're navigating these resources, some of it doesn't uh, seem clear to you or you, would just, you just have general questions about the portal, you can always give us a call. Um, our energy advisors are available to assist you um, on the weekdays from nine to five. We're gonna move on to the usage tab. And this is a helpful tab to give you a high level overview of your cost per billing cycle, as well as your usage. As you can see the line here in this first graph shows your cost and how that's changing over time. Um, and it's directly proportional to your usage as you, make, as you may assume or guess. So this line shows you your cost every month and your usage is indicated by these bars down below. So this graph is providing you, as I said, a high level overview on a monthly basis of your cost and usage. And if you were a solar customer, for example, you're, you're a customer that participates in the net energy metering program, what you would end up seeing is on the months that you overgenerate or have excess generation, some of these bars would actually point downwards, indicating that you've generated more than you consumed for that particular month. Scrolling down, you'll see that we have an additional graph, and this is strictly a usage graph. Here is where you can really get uh, more granular with uh, monitoring or analyzing your usage based on the time intervals that you set. And so right now it's set um, on a yearly basis, I wanna say, and you can adjust it using this tool below. You'll see uh, a bar that appears just below the graph and you have these little gray boxes that appear at the ends of this uh, tool. You wanna hover your mouse over these little gray boxes or edges and a double-sided arrow will appear. Once that double-sided arrow appears, you can click and hold this bar and start to adjust this usage graph based on what you'd like to see. So let's just take any given day and try to look at my usage over the course of a day. And so I can do that by continuing to narrow this graph little by little. And once I feel like I've gotten specific enough to where I, I wanna see my energy consumption, I can stop uh, adjusting the bar and I can start to look at my usage on an hourly basis. So as you can see here on uh, December 29th at uh, 3 p.m., I was using this amount of energy and it continues to uh, show me my usage on an hourly basis. When I have it to the interval that I, that I wanna have it at, I can also download an image of this bar graph right here. So I can do so by clicking on this download button that you see here. Uh, for all of you, it'll, it will appear as an arrow as well. So you can just click on that. 
And what's going to happen is that the system will download a, a screenshot of that for you. So it, it actually appears as a PNG file and you can reference that specific image that you have here to, to use it for your own analytical person, excuse me, for your own analytical purposes, um, if you like. We also provide that same feature on this bar graph as well. So if you want to save an image of this, you don't always want to reference your portal to see this image, you can do so by clicking on this button as well. Moving on to the services tab, you can also uh, opt your accounts to 3C Prime on your own. There's a couple of ways that you have been able to do that in the past, most notably by reaching out to the call center for that additional support. But you could also opt your own accounts on this portal. Uh, you can do all of your accounts at once by clicking on this feature right here. You can either select 3C Choice or 3C Prime, or you can do it at a at an individual service address uh, level as well. So if I wanted to opt this specific ad address to 3C Prime, I can do so individually right here. And the system is going to ask you to select the way that you'd like to receive a confirmation that your account has been opted up or down to 3C Choice. And you can do so by clicking on this drop down list and it ask you the format, the way that you'd like to be notified. You could also choose to not receive confirmation if you prefer. Finally, we have our programs tab. This is where you can find any relevant information for you to, to learn about energy programs. Currently, we have information on Electrify Your Ride. We do have our, our flyer available for you to review that provides you all of the information uh, I would say a high level overview of Electrify Your Ride. And if you'd like to obtain additional information, you can click on some of the links that we provide. So if you click on one of these boxes, it'll take you to the webpage to learn more about Electrify Your Ride. And if you click on this one, as you can guess, it'll take you to the application itself to apply into the program. As we said, we are looking to enhance um, the portal itself, we are looking to enhance um, the programs tab to a point where we can provide greater access to our customers to apply into the programs directly from the portal. But again, we can provide more updates to that as, as those uh, features begin getting developed in new iterations of the portal. So with that, I think that concludes our live walkthrough of the portal. We will be sharing uh, our contact information in just a second. At this moment, we have concluded our webinar. We are happy to take any questions from the audience. Ozzy, uh, no questions in the Q&A. And um, as of right now, I do not see any participants with their hands raised. Uh, if you would like to ask a question, uh, please feel free to raise your hand. We'll unmute you. I'll give it one more one more minute uh, while I put in the contact information here for our support team. Uh, dropping that in the chat, please see the chat. You'll see the contact information there as well as some of the links uh, that Ozzy was referring to. I was putting those in as he was giving his presentation. Not seeing any hands going up, Ozzy, or any questions that are coming through the Q&A at this time. So I think we can uh, include the presentation if nobody else has a question. Excellent. So as we mentioned, we will have all of these resources available in an email that we follow up with um, after this presentation. Any of you who attended this webinar, for folks that registered but couldn't attend, we will be providing um, all of the links that you'll need to um, reference the information that we shared in tonight's presentation. So if there are no additional uh, questions, we can go ahead and conclude our webinar for tonight. Again, for everyone who uh, attended tonight's presentation, thank you so much for 
taking the time to learn about the latest resources that are coming from Central Coast Community Energy. If you'd like to stay tuned on future um, events that we will be hosting on a monthly basis, be on the lookout for our newsletter or from uh, our emails that we send out to the customers. Okay, I see no additional questions. Everybody enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you so much for attending.